listen to this without a rug on the floor, like a tiled floor like what this is. You can actually go, you know, go five, five, six feet away from it and lay down on the floor and listen to it. And it sounds great. You know, you can stand up. Now, uh, my experience has been that if you do that on a rug, the high frequencies are going to roll off primarily because the, the grazing incidence absorption of an absorber gets greater for sound which is going across, you know, or grazing. And it's much less for sound and starting from here, going down and bouncing back up. Now, in effect, the ground plane array allows you to get away from the problem of a loudspeaker having a problem with the sound that bounces off the floor and goes up. Typically, on a typical two- or three-way speaker that's elevated up off the surface of the floor, you'll get sound that goes directly to your ears, in addition to sound that goes down to the floor and bounces up. And of course, that's a function of distance. I mean, the, the timings are such so that you'll get a, a tonal quality of the speaker which changes depending on what distance you listen to it. Now, fortunately, from a subjective standpoint, our ears can somewhat, uh, not avoid, but I mean, you, you can de-emphasize that effect. But this system here does not, illust does not exhibit those problems at all. It, it constructively uses the ground plane reflections to, uh, in effect, improve the speaker's sound field as a function of frequency. Now, I remember when I started this talk out that I was saying that you need to take the drivers and equally space them around a circular arc. Now, there's nothing that says that you can't make a straight line array and you can use, drive each speaker individually with delay and, and, and <clears throat> you can create a delay derived CBT array where you in effect take the speakers that are on a straight line and with delay shift, in effect shift the speaker from here over to here to make them acoustically appear to be on a line. And that works also very well. There are some differences between a a straight line delay derived CBT speaker and a circular arc. But the one big advantage of the circular arc is, is you, you, all you need to do is change the level of the speakers around the arc. I mean, in fact, you just turn the volume down. Whereas if you do this with a straight line array and delay, it takes a lot of amplifiers, a lot of DSP processing, etc., to make a an arced array from a straight line array. So that's much more complicated. It is just much simpler to put them around an arc. Now one other area that uh, the cameraman pointed out to me that so far I've been uh, using technical terms that mean a lot to loudspeaker engineers but that may not mean a lot to you. you perhaps you're a musician, you're somebody thinking about uh, maybe building one of these for your own project in your living room and you don't understand. One term called directivity is a term that a loudspeaker engineer uses quite frequently. <clears throat> the ideal loudspeaker would have constant directivity with frequency. Its distribution pattern wouldn't change as a function of going from low frequencies to high frequencies. Now one way a uh, non-mathematical explanation of directivity, you can use the example of a, a hose in your garden that you have one of these nozzles that fit on the end of the hose that you can twist and you can adjust the pattern from a, a very wide pattern to very narrow. But you'll also notice with this nozzle that when you have this wide pattern, the force of the water coming out is not very high. Whereas if you crank it down to where the water is coming out in a very narrow stream, the force of the water is very high. In addition, it goes a lot farther. So the, in effect, the hydraulic analogy that, to this for acoustics is that the, when you have the nozzle adjusted for a very narrow stream that goes a long distance, that's a so-called high directivity loudspeaker or water device. And when you have it adjusted for a wide 
but low dispersion. I mean, the, the force of the water is low. That would be a, a low directivity device. And so there's an analogy there between water and uh, sound coming out of a loudspeaker. And the other thing I mentioned was uh, you speak about beam width. Usually it's defined at the point where you go around a speaker and the level drops down 6 dB or 3 dB and you can just get a rough idea of the horizontal and vertical coverage of the loudspeaker based on its so-called beam width as a function of frequency. Then you also can speak like speak to things like coverage, etc.